bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were, and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want anything good. Come ye, children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lip from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace. And pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord remembereth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Psalm 34. Shalom and welcome back to the broadcast. It is Monday, uh, May 7th, 2018. And I thank you for joining me today. We're going to be taking a look at Exodus chapter 18, which is a very short chapter uh, that just kind of deals with two things. Uh, Moses' father-in-law brings Moses' wife and, and meets him uh, after he's heard all the amazing things that Yahovah, the Lord, has done for the people of Israel. And then he gives him some really great advice on governing all these people. Uh, because you, uh, up until this point, you have a situation where from morning till night, Moses is basically sitting in the midst of the people, uh, you know, interceding for them, you know, so that they can hear from the Lord, but also, you know, uh, judging between different things and you know his whole life is just this because there's so many people and as of right now Moses is the only one for them for him to turn to and so his father-in-law gives him some great advice about delegation <laughs> and, and anybody who's in a leadership position uh, will understand the importance of finding good people to delegate to uh, because you know it can't all be done by one and uh, that's basically what we're dealing with today. And then uh, next week we've got chapter 19 and then chapter 20, the following week, week which is the chapter that we would need to read uh, for Shavuot or Pentecost. And so the timing's going to work out perfectly. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at what, uh, what uh, Exodus chapter 18 has to say. And then we'll read a quick commentary uh, from Matthew Henry on the subject. Uh, we're reading from the King James Bible today, if you're wanting to read along. So, without further delay, uh, let's just take a look. Exodus chapter 18, verse 1. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, 
after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eleazar, for the God of my father said he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father in all, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father in all Jethro, am come unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. And Moses told his father in law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh, and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Of course, what he's actually saying there, now I know that Yahovah is greater than all gods. For in the thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses the morning, from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou self alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, and I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God board, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them the ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So basically Jethro is telling Moses, look, you've got to appoint a hierarchy here. You've got to have, you know, some leaders over the, the large number of thousands, and then some leaders who are over hundreds, and leaders over fifties, and, you know, the, he's almost advising Moses to structure it like, uh, like you would a government, or or something like that, uh, but but with Moses being the person who is to teach the people about the ordinances and the laws and how to walk with God, um, but there needs to be some type of, you know, you need to go through other leaders because one man can't can't deal with all of this every single day. It'll it'll eventually wear you out and it'll wear the people out. Verse twenty two, and let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all of Israel and made them heads over people, rulers over thousands, rulers over hundreds, rulers over fifties, and rulers over tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard cause they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way 
into his own land. And that is the end of chapter 18. Uh, so, not a lot going on there, um, but it is still important nonetheless. I want to finish by reading a quick commentary by Matthew Henry, if I may. Um, very short, a uh, little, just some thoughts on, on what's taking place here. He says this. He says, Here is the great zeal and toil of Moses as a magistrate, having been employed to redeem Israel out of the house of bondage. He is a further type of Christ, that he is employed as a lawgiver and a judge among them. If the people were as quarrelsome one with another as they were with God, no doubt Moses had many causes brought before him. This business Moses was called to do, it appears that he did it with great care and kindness. The meanest Israelite was welcome to bring his cause before him. Moses kept to his business from morning to night. Jesper thought it was too much for him to undertake alone. Also, it would make the administration of justice tiresome to the people. There may be an overdoing even in well-doing. Wisdom is profitable and direct that we may neither content ourselves with less than our duty nor task ourselves beyond our strength. Jethro advised Moses to a better plan. Great men should not only study to be useful themselves, but contrive to make others useful. Care must be taken in the choice of the persons admitted into such a trust. They should be men of good sense that understand business and that would not be daunted by frowns and clamors, but adorned the thought of a bride. Men of piety and religion, such as fear God, who dare not base a thing, though they could do it secretly and securely, the fear of God will be best fortify a man against temptations to injustice. Moses did not despise his advice. Those that are not wise, who think themselves to be wise, those are not wise who think themselves too wise to be counseled. You know, that's something that I bring up occasionally on my podcast is, you know, some people, uh, you know, I've noticed, think that they, they've got it all figured out, think they know everything. Um, too wise to be counseled if they know it all. Um, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 says, If any man think that he knoweth anything... He knoweth nothing yet that he ought to know. The wiser you are, the more you should realize you don't really know that much. I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. I made this little note uh, about this, you know, about Moses here. And I said, some think themselves to be too wise to receive counsel. Moshe, Moses, received the counsel of his father-in-law. Once again, showing that he is a humble man and the right man. For this God-appointed position. The ability to delegate is an important part of being able to lead. And that, my friends, is chapter 18. And uh, really all the thoughts that I have on it this morning. I just really wanted to open this morning with the with, with an encouraging psalm, Psalm 34. Um, I saw a clip of that on the Bible app for the daily verse, and it just really spoke to me, and so I thought I wanted to I wanted to share that with you. You know, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And isn't that true? If you walk upright and you walk in God's ways, you're going to run into some trouble. Spiritual trouble, uh, uh, wars from the, from the people amongst this world who hate God. And it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. It says, The Lord is nigh, near, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and he saveth such as be as a of a contrite spirit. And I hope that that uh, encouraged you to sm this morning. Shorter podcast this morning, but we had a shorter chapter to read. And uh, you know what? It's Monday morning, so it's okay to, to do it short. Um, it, there is a possibility that the podcast may be a little more sporadic for the next couple of months. And by sporadic, I mean it just may not always be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It may be different days throughout the week. Uh, just because in the summer, my work schedule changes and forces me into work even earlier. Um, so there may be t 
times, and I'm going to try to avoid it, but there may be times where the Monday podcast is released on Tuesday and and so forth, just uh, depending on how things go. Uh, so be praying for me if you would. Um, pray for my family if you wouldn't mind. And I just pray that I'd be able to do uh, this work that God's called me to do um, and to do it well. Uh, also, if you want to support the podcast uh, and support me and my family, you can do that. Patreon.com slash truthfed. That also gives you access to the Hebrew training course. The video comes out once every two weeks for that. Um, you can also support by PayPal or by snail mail. Uh, but I will let you know if you send anything by mail. Sometimes it does take me a couple of weeks to get to it. Um, which is not a problem for me. I'm just letting you know that in advance. Uh, the website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. I've been posting more and more there lately, and uh, I hope to po- I hope to continue to do that. Post some videos that I find inter- interesting, or articles that I find interesting, or even uh, things that I write myself. So scriptureandprophecy.com. That's all I got for you this morning. I hope you all have a blessed week. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time. God bless.